All right, all righty. Hello, good day, everybody. My name is Federico Hernandez. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm from Savvy Network and the RomLab.com. Um, I'm very happy to be here with everybody. Um, at the same time, thank you for all, everybody out there that's been able to join us. I know our life is changing. We're getting back to track. Um, certainly, the great thing about Savvy is that if you can't see it right now, you can see it later and you can join part of our subscription model. Um, but enough talking. Let me start with the presentation. Uh, well, quick introduction. Uh, ooh, I, I mentioned my name already. We can jump to the next thing, which is our, our, our tools. To the right, we have our chat box. And this is actually for everybody who's visiting us right now at Savvy.co. Uh, you have our chat box to the right. If you have any questions during the event, you can write any questions right below. Uh, we do ask everybody to share the event. Uh, we want as, to bring as many people as possible right now. If not, just share it for later because they'll, I'm sure they're going to enjoy it. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, we have so many people that are subscribing to our platform um, and uh, teachers, educators, and they're using the form, the platform to as a way to remind themselves about the all the information that's being shared right now in Zabby. Um, today's agenda, we're going to be 30, 40 minutes talking about the main presentation. Uh, then we're going to go one or two minutes contact information. Then uh, then we'll do, if we have some questions, 15, 20 minutes to our rum o'clock. Uh, for sure, we're going to be tasting a lot of rum, and we're going to be also... Uh, pairing rum with some foods, which is going to be really cool. Uh, well, let's deep dive um, really quickly. Today's topic, the life richness of Abuelo rum. Our guest is Hedy. Uh, and Hedy, wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't get ex excited yet. <laughs> no, you can wave. You can wave. You can wave. <laughs> uh, he's... Uh, this gentleman uh, graduated from the hotelier and restaurant restoration in France, which is a hotel and rest, uh, restaurant um, uh, school in France. He worked as a chef uh, in Maitre, uh, the hotel, and then he moved to the bar industry. He worked as a back bar at the famous Buddha bar, which I've only gone to the one in New York. I'd, I'd love to go to the one in Paris. Uh, then he moved to brand development manager with High Spirits in London. And then in 2017, he became part of the Rome Abuelo family as brand ambassador of UK, France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Switzerland. Uh, well, enough said. Let's bring on the, the nice gentleman here. Uh, hello, Hedy. Hello, everyone. Glad How to be here. Doing? I'm all good. I'm all good. Uh, back at home, as you can see. Well, maybe not, but that's home for me. Um, and well, ready to share the rum love with everyone and talk and enjoy ourselves. That's what rum is about. <laughs> All right, I have Keegan saying hello to you. I, I ah, know. hey, <laughs> my man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the same time, the so you what did you put in the wall? Are those like all carbon or are, like no, car are car 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 yeah, yeah, actually, they are tote bags. Uh, oh, yeah. We have some great tote bags, you know, they are recycled um, uh, tote bags that were branded Ron Abuelo. And obviously I had to, uh, we use them, you know, for events and uh, for activations, you know, all over Europe. Uh, but because of, you know, those times of confinement and because I wanted to do some, some cocktails at home, you know, share my love by in uh, via internet. So like, well, you know what, let's make a wall of it because the quality is great and it looks amazing yeah. as well. So I was like, definitely, let's do this. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You have, uh, you guys, you have some style. It's actually the first one that I've seen with like, so cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I ask you this, right? Did you have this before the COVID-19? Uh, yeah. With this bar? Well, I did it just at the beginning of COVID-19. I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm going to be home for like a month or two. Well, I came out like three and a half, even more. <laughs> not. And well, definitely. I was like, yeah, cool. I tried to do it outside, but the weather uh, didn't really help. I wanted to do one outside in my garden. Um, I was pretty tough, you know, the rain and everything. I was like, yeah, not gonna, not gonna do that. 
Very cool. Well, hey, let's let's do this. Um, let's jump directly. I want, let's learn more about you. Uh, today for our for today we actually feature uh this gentleman on the rumlab.com newsletter. We have it on the website as well, the rumlab.com. Uh, if you guys want to see all his questionnaire, he's actually been one of the few persons that has responded to every single question in detail, which I, I was seeing last night. It's like, wow, he wrote to everything, which is really cool. Uh, um, but make sure to go to the rumlab.com to read his entire interview. Uh, we actually, every week, we try to feature one uh, amazing human being in the rum industry. Um, and today is this Hedy Ron Abuelo. That's his uh, uh, AKA. Ron <laughs> Well, as, as I know, like a lot of aficionados, you know, go to the Rum Lab. It's a great platform to learn uh, about new ways, about old ways, about tradition of every single uh, way of making rum. Uh, for example, there is a lot of people know more about, you know, the English style of rum. A lot of people well, here in France, they know a lot more about the French style agricole. And a lot of people as well know about the Latino rums when they can find everything in Rum Lab. Um, as People could see if they go through the Rum Lab about my question. I, I used to be a bartender. Uh, well, as they say, you can take the bartender out of the bar, but you cannot take the bar out of a bartender. So to get started, I really want to make myself a little cocktail. And All right, share let's, the let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Move. All right. Position this your is, camera. That looks pretty good. <laughs> this is not a professional setting, so apologies to... To the guys I know behind the bar, you know, it's uh, it's very humble. <laughs> all right, don't worry. We're all doing magic. Uh, <laughs> we can't we can't see your face too much. So you have to... <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, you there. know, I'm going to do a little bit of Humpa Loompa style, you know, the back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. All, all right. right, John John Atkins says hello. Saul Antonio says hello. Hey. Alfu says hello. A lot of the guys are here, man. It's happy time, definitely. Yeah. So, Abuelo is, is a famous Latino rum, obviously. We do only age rum that you will see through the presentation after. But one of the favorite rum in Panama, and it's one of the favorite, is the Siete Anos. It's one of the favorite because it's a great starter for a sipping rum, but it's an amazing rum for mixing. So, I'm going to do uh, tonight a twist, well, tonight, today wherever you are, uh, a twist on a bee's knees, which is like kind of a daiquiri style with honey, but I'm gonna add a little touch to it. So I'm gonna put 50 mils of Ron Abuelo Siete Años. I'm gonna put up 25 mils of lemon juice and not lime, freshly pressed if possible, guys. Freshness is always the happy one, little spill. I'm going to put about five mils of honey syrup. So it pretty much cut honey with water. Easier to incorporate in a cocktail. A bar spoon of orange flower water. Okay. As I said, it's not a professional setting. Apologies. <laughs> All right, bar spoon it is. And I'm going to put a liqueur that I really like which is the Caribbean pineapple from Gifar, which is a premium liqueur. And it uses rum as a spirit base, and the spirit comes from a distillery, Arena Hermanos, in Panama, in Pese. So I'm going to put two bar spoons. OK. As you can see, the glass is being refreshed. A little stir. Text. Happy days. I'm going to put a touch more of the Caribbean pineapple because it's very good. Oh. And oh. put some ice. Okay, now I'm going to be up. <laughs> Little shake. Here we are. As the Backstreet Boy used to say, not too hard, not too soft. All right. And if you can, of course, give it a double strain. 
אם זה בגלל שורץ? I wish I could do close up. It would be awesome if I could do close up. <laughs> As I said, it's a, it, it should be normally just a live about yes, rum, rum without cocktail. There you go. Ah, nice. That looks very nice. Green. I call it the, the, uh, the Panamanian bee. Yeah, that looks very nice. So, um, salute. Yes. Salute. Question for you. Um, Tell me a little bit about the, the, like about yourself, how you started in this issue. I gave a, a small brief and something that's yeah. really interesting that we'll, we're going to talk about it later is that you wanted to be a chef, but tell us a little bit about who you are. Who am I? So born and raised in Paris. Um, I have a heritage. Obviously I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Swedish originally, as you can see. Uh, my background is actually from Tunisia so North Africa. Uh, which have been actually population, a population that has been mixed with Spanish, French, and European culture, mainly, and Italian as well. So born and raised in France, uh, did all my studies, but I really passioned myself for the service industry from a young age. Uh, my father uh, used to own uh, a cafe uh, back in Paris, in the 14th uh, district of Paris, or so south uh, Paris. Your father. For, yeah, my father, uh, for 10 years, and then moved into a company of movers, so he completely like when from the other side, but I really passionate myself for it. Um, so I studied directly um, to Anthony in the 92 district, so it's in the suburb, and got my diplomas. From there, I was trained as a, a chef and a chef de rang, which is like above waiters, you know, like those, uh, those gastronomical uh, places when the waiter can literally prepare a steak in front of you. It can chop oh, wow. a duck in front of you. Prepare everything. Yeah, that's pretty tough, actually, <laughs> because you had to pair as well the perfect wine with it, uh, the food seasoned perfectly, the, all the details about the regions and where your food and your wine came from. Um, then I started uh, in the professional uh, world as, you know, a chef de rang in gastronomical place. But after six months, six months to a year within that industry in Paris, um, I actually noticed the bartenders. The bartenders were exceptional. Uh, they were preparing, and they were actually chefs and waiters in the same time. They were like the fusion of both world, of both world. They were preparing, but at the same time, they were in the front uh, of, the of the clients, which was great to me, and they had the liberty to create anything they want. From there, I uh, put my, uh, I, uh, I, uh, how do you call it, how do you say it? I, uh, I put a job application to Buddha Bar in Paris to become a bartender, and I started as a barback, which is yeah. like the unsung hero of the bar. So did all my work, and before becoming a bartender in Buddha Bar, I was actually a morning bartender, you know, just prepare the juices for the... <laughs> for the really um, yeah. You do the juice and the pre-mix of cocktail for the night, and you serve the people during lunch. So not a lot of cocktails. And a friend of mine that I met in Buddha Bar said, like, you know what? Let's go to London or Canada. We just flip a coin and it was London. <laughs> so no we, way. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> well, with some money like saved or something like that? Well, at, at the time, you know, we're talking before 2010, you know, we were living both at our parents. Uh, life was good, you know, we we're saving a lot of money. Yeah, it could yeah, have yeah. been, to be honest with you, it didn't really matter. And yeah. um, from there, uh, went to London. And for the, for the UK people that, that hear me, my first job in London, I still remember, was a glass collector, not even barback. My, my, my diploma in France was worth nothing in the UK. <laughs> so I started as a glass collector in Zoo Bar in Piccadilly Circus, which is like a big nightclub with plastic glass and shots of Jägermeister everywhere. <laughs> with like shot girls going around, that, that was just madness. Um, then I worked uh, to, in Beer One, Beer One, which is now the biggest chain of cocktails in, in the UK. Uh, they used to be guys, the owners actually started their, uh, their adventure after they left uh, TGI Friday, before they were serving food. So they was very focusing cocktail. I had to learn in eight weeks over 350 cocktails, or I, could get, or, or I would get fired, pretty much. That was eight weeks to learn, or you out. That no, was very selective. Wait, wait, that was yeah. TGI Fridays? 
Now, uh, actually, the owners of B at One, they, they left TGI Friday. Got it. Before they were selling food, when TGI Friday was only drinks. We're talking the TGI Friday that people see in the movie Cocktail with Tom Cruise. It was yeah. like, now, you know, TGI Friday does a lot of food and a lot of other things. And they actually took that core and made it in the UK as B at One. So I passed all my, my exams pretty much within B at One and became a certified bartender and became until I was a head trainer in the Hammersmith site. Then I moved on to All Star Lanes in the UK okay. as a bartender and a bar manager. Uh, All Star Lane, for people who saw the movie Kick-Ass with Nicolas Cage, the scene when he's drinking a milkshake with his daughter, this is in an All Star Lane in London. That was the one I was working in, actually. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty sweet. Uh, worked there for quite some time, then worked one year at the Beachcomber in Basewater that the UK audience know. Uh, with Adam, uh, it's a it's a small little bar, but it's to me it's the unsung gem of Basewater in the UK. Worked there with uh, with my very good friend, my very close friend Adam, uh, that owns uh, the place. And then after one year, uh, went back to Star Lane for like two years, but in Brick Lane, East London. Uh, I became as well champion of cocktails for an abuelo competition. Oh wow! Congratulations. <laughs> in the same time, yeah, I was I was very happy. That was my first time that I went to Panama to discover the history of Panama, which is great. Uh, and from then I worked in NOLA, a cocktail bar that was very focused on to the New Orleans style cocktails. So a lot of bourbon, a lot of rum, a lot of rye whiskey and uh, high spirits. So the company that was distributing Rana Bueno gave me the opportunity to work for them as a brand development manager in London. So, you know, I was more of the commercial side of it. Yeah. In 2017, Rana Bueno said, you know what? You always been since you win the competition. You always been a big fan of Ronaldo. We we love your energy. We love the way you talk about the rum, the passion you have in. We want you to to come to come join the family, to be part of 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 the brand itself. And I was very happy. And I Is said, that when you did your tattoo of Ronaldo. <laughs> 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 you know what? I would love to have a tattoo. I don't because I'm afraid of needles. <laughs> That's a good excuse. Okay. No. <laughs> and since 2017, well, I've been I've been part of the family and definitely more than happy to be part of it and will carry on spreading the gospel. So, so tell us, let's talk about the uh the the history of Abuelo Rum, right? Uh and at the same time, tell us a little bit about the family and are they involved? So we can start from like a little bit about the history oh, and yeah, where yeah. we are today, where the family and how they are involved. Oh wow, sure. Well and I'm gonna start drinking a little bit of rum because I'm dry. Oh yeah, me too. See how much I talk. I need I need to be constantly hydrated here. Yeah. <laughs> so the history of Ron Abuelo is uh, is actually a long history. Uh, we're talking like about the history of Panama itself, uh, because the history of Ron Abuelo starts with the beginning of Panama. Panama is still a very young country. Uh, the country had its uh, independence in 1903, so let's say 117 years ago, which is pretty early because it used to be a Colombian province. Uh, but the history of Ranabuelo start a little bit before and officially five years after the independence. Uh, it started with Don Jose Barela Blanco, uh, the founder, you know, our grandfather, the grandfather of everyone in Ranabuelo who uh, left uh, his hometown, which was Betanzos, in Galicia to, you know, seek, seek a new adventure in, in the new world. So he arrived in Panama and saw the opportunity of a, of a growing country, of a bridge actually between the North American and the South American. And he started his adventure with his wife uh, and started the first um, Panamanian sugar meal. So the roots of Ranabuelo, of the Varela family, because Ron Abuelo is a brand of the Varela family, uh, was not in the rum, but was in the origins of rum, which is the sugarcane. 